Cross Cheek Laura by Thomas Campion. I'm Anusha Tennakon. Thomas Campion. Thomas Campion was born in London, England in 1567 and he died in 1620. He was a poet, composer, musical and literary theorist, physician and one of the outstanding songwriters. His lyric poetry reflects his musical abilities in its subtle mastery of rhythmic and melodic structure. Even though he wrote poetry during Elizabethan era, his poetry differed from the poetry of other Elizabethan poets. His originality as a lyric poet lies rather in his treatment of the conventional Elizabethan subject matters. Rather than using visual imagery to describe static pictures, he expressed the delights of the natural world in terms of sound, music, movement or change. Here in this slide, you can have a look at the hall poem, Ross Cheek Laura. When you look at the poem, you can easily understand it's a four stanza poem that is separated into sets of four lines or chord trains. Now, let's pay our attention to the analysis of the poem. So here, we'll pay our attention first to the first stanza. Rose cheek Laura come, sing thou smoothly with thy beauties, silent music e the other, sweetly grazing. The poet starts the poem asking the woman whom he is infatuated with to come and sing. Here, the poet does not ask her to sing actually, but to grace him with the music of her beauty. The first answer gives the readers a very clear idea on to whom this poem is dedicated by the poet. That is none other than a lady named Laura. She is a beautiful lady with rosy cheeks. As mentioned early, the poet does not want Laura to sing, but he believes her appearance itself is like music. Second stanza. Lovely forms do flow from consent divinely framed Heavens is music and thy beauty's birth is heavenly. Here you can see the continuation of the poet's description on Laura's music. He assures both her sweet music and beautiful figure were made in heaven. Here we can see very clearly that the poet is enchanted by her appearance. Further, he says that her beauty was designed in heaven. The poet continues his description of Laura's music. It is too spoken of as being made up in heaven. Accordingly, both the composition of her music and the shape of her body were made by God in heaven. Third stanza. These dull notes we sing, discords need for helps to grace them. Only beauty purely loving knows no discord. He stops talking directly about Laura and starts talking about the nature of love. According to him, pure love has no conflicts. Here, he changes the direction of the poem. The poet, who finishes talking directly about Laura, turns to describe the nature of love. In fact, love in general. The poet metaphorically compares the usual relationships we have with dull knots. This is because 
our usual relationships are often with conflicts. He believes that only pure love has no conflict. If I explain this further, dull knots are compared to ordinary relationships which have conflicts. Fourth stanza. But still most delight, like clear springs renewed by flowing, ever perfect, ever in themselves eternal. Fourth stanza is the continuation of the third stanza. He considers love as the force that is able to move delight. He compares it to a clear spring which renews itself by flowing. In this stanza, which is the continuation of the third stanza, the poet presents the characteristics of pure love, comparing it to a clear spring. Clear spring renews itself by flowing. Love perfects those it touches. Those who involve in this idealized relationship are eternal and ever perfect because of the love they share. So, according to the analysis of the stanzas of the poem, Rose Cheek Laura, it is obvious that the writer provides an idealized form of love and beauty through this poem. So, the following can be taken as the themes of the poem. Number one, idealized beauty and love. Number two, beauty as a silent form of music. Hope to meet you again with an educational video like this. Thank you.